Inside of the execution chamber, inside Wandsworth Prison, one of the Second World War's worst traitors stepped towards notorious hangman Pierpoint for his execution. William Joyce is most commonly remembered and known as Lord Haw Haw for his Nazi propaganda broadcasts throughout the Second World War, which aimed to demoralise the British, but he would be sent crashing through the trapdoor of the gallows for his crimes. Joyce's execution is one which is rather contentious, as some consider that he was not actually a citizen of the country he was supposed to have betrayed. But Joyce in the final days of the war found himself captured by the Allies, and he was even wounded during his capture. But his radio broadcast show, Germany Calling, gained a notorious reputation for itself, and some Brits even found it amusing and rather laughable, giving the presenter Joyce the name Lord Haw Haw because of his strange upper-class accent. But what happened with his trial and execution? Join us today as we look at the ruthless execution of Lord Haw Haw, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. William Joyce was born in America, specifically in New York, in April 1906. His parents were British, but his father was an American citizen of Irish origin, and his mother was Anglo-Irish. Joyce, for a number of his early years, lived inside of America before his family went back to Ireland. When he was just 15, he was recruited by the British Army during the Irish War of Independence, and he almost at one point in his early life was killed by the IRA when he was walking home from school. After this brush with the IRA, he was then sent to England, as he was said to have been in harm's way. Whilst he was here, he attended university, and specifically he became obsessed with the political beliefs of fascism, and when he attended a conservative meeting for the candidate of Lambert North, Joyce was then attacked by a group of communists. During this brawl, he was slashed in the face by a sharp razor, and this left him with a very distinctive scar on his face, specifically one that ran from the corner of his mouth to his ear. He remained a devoted fascist, and he got involved in different organisations, including the BUF, the British Union of Fascists, and he joined them officially in 1932. These were led by Oswald Mosley, and Joyce became a well-known member. He spoke out at meetings, and he was a ferocious speaker who could whip the crowd up a lot. One witness who saw Joyce speak said of his speeches that he was thin, pale and intense. He had not been speaking many minutes before we were electrified by this man, so terrifying in its dynamic force, so vitriolic. But five years after joining the BUF, he left the group as he was not happy with their direction, and he started the NSL, the National Socialist League. This was a political group that believed very similar things to what Hitler and the Nazis in Germany were preaching, and they were heavily influenced by the Nazis. But the group later became dissatisfied with Joyce, and they turned against him, and they preferred to look for Hitler for inspiration rather than Joyce. He had, for a significant amount of time, began to search for a way out of Britain, and he wanted to go and live inside of Nazi Germany. Before World War II broke out on the continent, Joyce arrived in Berlin, and he was then scouted by Joseph Goebbels to work for him inside of the Reich Ministry of Propaganda. Goebbels thought that Joyce could be used to poison the minds of the British, and he said he would be given his own radio show on the British service called Germany Calling. Joyce's show was aimed to spread Nazi ideas and policies, and he became the British broadcaster for Nazi Germany. In his show, he tried to convince the British that the working class were being kept down, and that they should rebel against the government, and his show actually had a different effect than what was intended. Rather than intimidating scare listeners, some believed it was actually humorous and funny, and some believed it was interesting to discover what the enemy was saying about the war effort. But the British government did not want people listening to Joyce, but millions tuned in, but as the Second World War waged on, William Joyce's language became much more brutal and violent. He praised the strength and might of the German army, and he constantly threatened Britain that they would be invaded. His propaganda did little to impact morale, and his nickname Lord Haw Haw became a joke inside of Britain. The Allied soldiers who were even fighting the Nazis tuned into his show whilst they were near the front lines, and they saw it as light relief from the conflict. Following the German war machine faltering with the loss at the Battle of Stalingrad, and after Allied advancements in the aftermath of D-Day, Joyce's shows became much darker and more depressing. The Allies were heavily bombarding German cities and industrial towns, 
and the final radio broadcast made by Lord Haw Haw occurred on the 30th of April 1945 as Berlin crumbled. During this he was incredibly drunk and was rambling and he claimed that the Soviets were not to be trusted and he finished his broadcast with a final Heil Hitler before wishing the people farewell who listened. Joyce managed to flee as his radio station was captured the next day after his final broadcast. He tried to get to Flensburg, which was for many the last part of Nazi government close to the Danish border. It was here where Admiral Karl Dönitz established his brief government following Hitler's death, as he had been made the president of the Third Reich. Joyce along with his wife were going to try and stay and get to Joyce along with his wife were going to try and get to Sweden, but for some reason they decided to stay in a small village. The British Army were looking for him, they knew exactly who he was, and T Force, a special unit, tried to locate him, and on the twenty eighth of may nineteen forty five, Joyce along with his wife went on a short walk to the village of Kufamoyla. They went to buy some supplies and food, but along this route they had a big argument, and Joyce then walked back alone through the woods. He then rested and had a lie down, and he then went back onto the road to meet up with his wife when he was spotted by the British. British officers approached him and asked for his name, and Joyce replied in French, but one of the men realised who he was by the tone of his voice. As he went to get his identity papers out, Lieutenant Geoffrey Perry mistakenly thought he was pulling out a gun, and Perry then shot Lord Haw Haw, and after this he was arrested. Through looking at his papers it was clear that the British got the man they wanted, and he was briefly treated inside of a military hospital for his gunshot wound. He was then repatriated to London and was placed on trial. William Joyce was said to have been one of the worst British traitors of the Second World War, and the government wanted the death penalty. He was tried on three counts of treason, but there were issues about his citizenship. As he had lied about his country of origin to get his passport, this meant he had invalidated his own citizenship, and thus therefore could never have been a British subject, and only British subjects could be convicted of treason. But the prosecution got around this stumbling block, and he was then sentenced to death, despite appealing. He was held inside of Wandsworth Prison to await his death sentence, and whilst he was on death row, he wrote, I warn the British people against the crushing imperialism of the Soviet Union. May Britain be great once again, and in the hour of the greatest danger in the West, may the standard be raised from the dust, crowned with the words, You have conquered nonetheless. It was even claimed that he stated that the swastika will be raised from the ground, and that the Third Reich would be resurrected. All this was in vain, as on the 3rd of January 1946, on a cold morning, a large crowd had gathered outside of Wandsworth Prison for the notification that his execution had been carried out. Some believed he was wrongfully condemned, but others wished to be close to the final treason execution that would be carried out within Britain. On the day of his execution, Lord Haw Haw awoke early, and he refused to have any breakfast, but he did drink a cup of coffee. At specifically 8.59am, the governor of Wandsworth Prison entered his cell, and he was informed that his execution would now occur and take place. The execution chamber was just through a door, and as he was led into it, William Joyce's knees began to tremble and go weak. Albert Pierpoint was his executioner, and he said that his final words were, I think we'd better have this on you now. But Joyce was then taken to the trap door, where he was to be sent crashing through, and Pierpoint made final checks of his arms and legs to ensure that when he fell through the trapdoor quickly, it would be enough to kill him. A black hood was then placed over his head, and the noose was secured. Within seconds, Pierpoint released the trapdoor, and William Joyce was then killed. The force of the drop had allegedly burst open his scar, and it was a rather bloody scene. Less than ten minutes after he was informed of his execution, the official announcement that Joyce had been executed was secured to the prison gate of Wandsworth, and some men outside then gave a hit the salute. The execution of William Joyce is one that is rather debatable, due to the issues regarding his citizenship, and whether he was truly a subject of the king or not, or whether he was actually British. The decision to bring him back to England to face execution is also a strange one, as he could have been condemned in Germany on a gallows such as Hamlin Prison, away from the crowds and celebrity that he had back in Britain. He did not shoot anyone, neither did he take anyone's life during the Second World War, but the British government 
believed he was one of the most despicable traitors, and for this he needed to go to the gallows for his actions. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for watching.